This week, the U.S. reached a somber milestone with more mass shootings than days in the year so far. That number making clear the chilling reality of the gun crisis that is hitting communities nationwide, including in Nashville, where in just days, families will mark one month since six teachers and children were gunned down in an elementary school. And ahead of that anniversary, the Tennessee governor, Bill Lee, is now calling for a special legislative session to tackle gun reform. Among those pushing for immediate action on tighter gun laws are three state Democratic lawmakers who are dubbed the Tennessee Three. They have emerged as some of the most powerful voices on gun reform after being punished for protesting on the Tennessee House floor. All three of them are heading to the White House tomorrow to discuss gun violence and what could be done about it with President Biden. And all three of them are here. Joining me now, Representatives Justin Jones, Justin J. Pearson, and... Gloria Johnson. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Representative Jones, I want to start with you. I mean, what are you going to tell the president tomorrow? Yeah, um, I'm going to lift up the names of Aquila Da Silva, of, of Michael Hill, of, of these children whose lives were taken um, in Nashville, and, and ask for the president to declare a, a public health emergency when it comes to gun violence. I think that we need um, emergency response because we're facing a crisis situation. And that um, in states like ours, we need help from our, our national leaders um, because we're in a state where um, the only action that our colleagues took in response to the mass shooting in Nashville was to expel the two youngest black lawmakers and then to pass a law to protect gun manufacturers. That's all they passed this session. Mm -hmm. And so we need support and we must continue the fight on a nationwide scale. I do want to play a little bit of what President Biden has said about what he thinks he's able to do and what he's not. Listen. I have on the full extent of my executive authority to do on my own anything about guns. Congress has to act. The majority of the American people think having assault weapons is bizarre. Do you agree with that? Do you think that he's maxed out his uh, potential here? And, you know, I mean, maybe he's right that Congress does need to act. But is that something that you think is possible? Right, so obviously Congress needs to act and our state legislatures need to act. Uh, we're in a state where the Republican Party that's in control has refused to do anything substantive about protecting kids and children. But for President Biden, and we're fortunate to have the chance to meet with him tomorrow, it is also to think about beyond executive orders, what other authority exists within departments and agencies uh, that the president is ultimately responsible for that can call for a public health emergency, that can call for resources to go into communities that are feeling the uh, harm of the epidemic of gun violence the most in order to get mental health resources, in order to get gun prevention resources to those places as well. I think there's a really a holistic approach that has to be taken that isn't just addressing guns, but it's addressing how we prevent gun violence and how we support communities that are suffering because of the inaction and the people like the Republican Party in Tennessee. There is also the culture of guns in this country. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, I feel like this week we really saw that so vividly. We yeah. had these three incidents with young people doing mm -hmm. normal, innocent things, right. being gunned down. Um, luckily, some of them survived. But uh, Representative Johnson, I mean, you represent actually a pretty conservative part yeah. of Tennessee. I mean, your district went for Trump, or your district, which is in a county that went for Trump by 15 points in the last election mm -hmm. in 2016 by 23 points. How do you see the challenge of taking on that culture? Well, you know, the reality is in my district, because, because I'm a teacher taught for 27 years, I was in a school that had a school shooting. Gun violence has always been a big issue for me, and um, I have read, run red flag laws in the past. But we polled in my district in Red Knox County, and overwhelmingly, the majority of Republicans in my district support red flag laws, and independents, and Democrats. So this shouldn't be difficult in our legislature because many Republicans also support reforms that are sensible. But it is, so why? I mean, why? Well. We, as we saw on uh, this week, the Tennessee Firearms Association were standing right in there. You know, the NRA is big in Tennessee. They're big donors to Republican uh, campaigns. And the Firearms Association, I mean, they had a letter that they were passing out to all Republican members that was quite threatening, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, they were even sort of harassing some of the women, some of the moms that were there asking for us to talk about gun violence. Mm -hmm. Um, they're prominent, they're present, and they're 
they're near threat. So, so Tennessee House Republicans put out this tweet on this issue of red flag laws. It says any red flag law is a non-starter for House Republicans. Our mm. caucus is focused on finding solutions that prevent dangerous individuals from harming the public and preserve the Second Amendment rights of, of law-abiding citizens. You know, Governor Lee, who is a Republican, he says he wants this special session. But, like, what reasonably can we expect to come out of this? I think movements can change political priorities. The reason that this NRA-endorsed governor is calling a special session is not because he saw the light, but because he felt the fire and pressure of a movement mm -hmm. of thousands of students, mothers, community members coming to the Capitol week after week after week since this mass shooting occurred. Mm -hmm. And so what I also know, uh, some inside knowledge about that tweet is that yeah. I've had Republican colleagues tell me that leadership put out that statement without talking to all their Republican members. So they put out a statement on behalf of the caucus without talking to all of their members, many of the moderates who say we should pass red flag law, something that the majority of Tennesseans support across party line, because it's not an issue of left or right, but it is a moral issue of right or wrong. Do you think there are mod there is moderate support in the Tennessee legislature right now to do something on guns, and will they be allowed to do it? The reality is thousands of people have come to our capital. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people have sent phone had phone calls and emails going to this uh, Republican majority saying that they need to do something. We have folks who are Republicans holding signs saying, I'm a Republican, I want to see gun common sense gun control legislation. The reality is the pressure from what's happening outside is forcing people who are within the institution to do differently than they otherwise or normally would. And that is what gives me courage and hope in this moment. You were gonna- Yeah, I, I definitely have hope because of all the people that have been coming out. We did a human chain of eight, almost 9,000 people mm -hmm. um, from Vanderbilt Hospital to the legislature. And it is having a difference. And those Republicans that he was talking about, Republicans for gun sense, they were there every day last week and just letting people know. Um, however, you, you know, I know that there are some Republicans that would like to vote with us, whether or not they will, because they are bullied in their own caucus. And it's, you know, will they have the courage? Mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take political courage. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they will find that courage to do the right thing, because an overwhelming majority of Tennesseans want to see something done. They want to focus on more security and all that in the schools. Mm -hmm. And for me, I want to prevent guns from ever getting to the schoolhouse door. Mm -hmm. We can do prevention that keeps guns from getting there. It seems like they want a gun battle at the door right. with a lot of police and you know, let's do, let's think about prevention and how do we prevent those guns from getting to the schoolhouse door? I want to show this image from earlier this week of Representative Jones. You were walking into the Tennessee Capitol with a coffin um, representing, as you were just saying, uh, the, the children, mm -hmm. the, the young children who were killed this week. Um, these are tactics. I think some people, you know, you're making a statement there, and some people have criticized your tactics. Mm. Uh, what do you say to them? So, so that casket was actually brought by the clergy who came, clergy who have buried children and, and, and congregants who were killed because of gun violence. Um, that march was led on behalf of uh, Reverend William Barber II um, of the repairs of the breach, and, and they asked us to bring that in because they could not bring it in. And so we brought in as a symbol that we must challenge this policies of death that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are promoting, uh, policies that make it easier to get a gun than it is to get health care in our state. And so it was, it was about lifting up the issue and, 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 and dramatizing for the nation that this is an issue of life or death and that, and that if we leave session and do nothing, that we have morally failed because children, three nine-year-olds lost their lives in Nashville where I live. Three adults lost their lives. Yesterday was the anniversary of another mass shooting in Nashville at the Waffle House where four precious young people lost their lives. And we've had more mass shootings um, this year than, than, than we can even count because we're not doing anything. And so it is an issue of life or death. It is personal and it, it requires us to do things that are out of the ordinary, like protests on the House floor, like bring a casket and say, colleagues, look at what we're doing. There are children dying and we have to do something to, 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 do, to move the needle forward and to force action. Mm -hmm. There was um, this week uh, a member of that body, Scotty Campbell, another representative mm -hmm. who resigned, but only after it was publicly revealed that he right. had been found to uh, have been guilty of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. And that happened prior to you two being expelled from that body. What's your response to how that was handled? Well, Speaker Cameron Sexton uh, is running a mobocracy, not a democracy. And in this type of institution, what he desires and wants is what rules. Uh, and what he wanted was to expel lawmakers for 
protesting to end gun violence, and he wanted to protect a lawmaker who committed sexual assault against a 19-year-old intern. That's what we're dealing with in our state, yeah. when we have a supermajority of the Republican Party that's way more concerned about protecting their own, upholding the systems of white supremacy and patriarchy, than doing something about justice. And so it wasn't until it was public that uh, uh, Speaker Sexton, Leader Lambert, actually did something about this. But it shows the disparity in treatment for black lawmakers, for women lawmakers, and for the white lawmakers who are in charge and, and, and operating in the state of Tennessee. And it shows everyone in this nation why we have to continue to be persistent, why we have to continue to advocate for change that needs to happen in Tennessee. All right.